Yes, he is. 
There would be no standard in the kingdom of God in the church without the black woman. There would not be a me. And there would not be a you. If there had not been for a black woman. Society has tried to put their foot on you. But you rise. house, Sister Young. Happy Mother's Day. You have to understand that women are the only creature that God gave the ability to give birth. And every time you produce life, death is ever present. For being our wives, the mothers of our children, our motivators and our strength and our encouragers. Thank you. Today we honor you. Today we honor you. God bless you, second and all of you of my time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day again. Amen. Amen. To all the mothers that's in the house. Amen. Today, um, I want to introduce to you again, Pastor Jerry Wade Jr. Yeah. from the uh, Providence Church in uh, the Anchorage Homes edition of Houston, also known as the Four Four. <laughs> he was here um, last time with us, and uh, he talked a Bible study. A Bible study lesson about uh, the rising of Lazarus. And today he's back with us to uh, preach a sermon to us. I never heard him preach, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you haven't heard him preach. But I'm praying that uh, everyone would uh, get on board with it. He needs your prayers. He needs your amen. Can we do that second one, Alan? Amen. Uh, I'm going to pass it along to Pastor Jerry Wade Jr. Thank you. I don't know what the is due, but I just feel something in my spirit. Is that all right? Can I go old school for a minute? There are some things. I, I mean, I know there are some places I, I don't go, but I'm sure of oh, this one thing. Yes, God is real. So I hear the 
first giving on to God. In memory of Pastor Arthur Ray Young. Sister Young. Ministers, deacons, church family, and second Mount Olive. It's just a blessing to be here this morning. I count it all joy to be with you this morning. Before I go any further, I want to take time to pay homage, honor, and respect to the memory, the life, the love, the legacy, and the labor of Pastor Arthur Ray Young. Can you give God praise for the life, the love, the legacy, and the labor of Pastor Young. Amen. Until the mother of the house, Sister Young, for all of the years. Serves. Amen. Amen. Notice I say serves. I didn't say serve. She serves. Amen. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Amen. Because without you, there is no us. As we thank you for your prayers, for your work, for your care, and for your love. Amen. My wife, Melody Wade, is with me. As well as my daughter, Harmony Wade. Why don't y'all stand up so they can see me? Amen. So good that they came with me this morning. Amen. This morning, I. I promise you I won't be before you long, because that's just not my style. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. And I promise you I won't be long, no matter how long that may take. Amen. I, I, I can only speak for me. I can't speak for the Holy Spirit. Amen. But there is a word this morning, and if you have your Bibles, I ask that you would turn with me to the sixth chapter of Galatians. All right. Now, I know this is Mother's Day. You may be looking for a Mother's Day sermon, but every day is Mother's Day. Amen. And every sermon is a Mother's Day sermon. Amen. 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 And I know that usually in occasions like this, a preacher comes and brings his best sermon that he's been preparing down through the years and been preaching everywhere he goes, but today I'm going to try something new. All right. All right. This is my favorite passage in the Bible, and I haven't been able to preach it until now. Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to read for our hearing this morning, verse 9. When you have it, would you say, Amen. It says, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season ye shall reap if ye faint not. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season. Mm. Ye shall reap if ye faint not. May God have a blessing to those that hear, read, study, and live by the word of God. I want to use very shortly this morning the subject don't give up. Don't give up. You know, I confused my calling when I was called by God to preach his word. 
Because for the longest time, I thought that my job was to change the world. I thought that the message that God gave me and the passion that God gave me was to be used to change the world. But one day God tapped me on my shoulder and he whispered in my ear. He said it somewhere in Malachi. He said, I am God. And beside me, there is no other. In other words, he was telling me, I am God. I am the change. You can barely change your clothes. You can change nothing. I am the change. And our mission, whether we choose to accept it or not, is to usher people to the change. We should quicken the call, awaken the known, expand the kingdom, and usher people to change, creating disciples. That's what we're supposed to do. We have no ability, no power, no authority to change anybody. Because we can't even change ourselves. But here, here, here it is. This is why I said all of that. It's because even though we don't have the efficacy to change anybody or anything, even that which we are charged with gets tough. Doing what God has called us to do gets tough. Living for God is not easy. Sometimes. Living for God is not easy. All right. I don't care what people may tell you. Brothers and sisters, if you're thinking about joining church today, I must tell you that serving God is not a flowery bed of ease. It gets rough. It gets tough. You have to go through some things. You have to deal with some folk. Serving God will pay off, but it's not easy. I heard someone say in a church not too long ago that when you give your life to God, everything will be all right. And that's the biggest lie I've ever heard. Because I gave my life to the Lord over 30 years ago. And it's been tough. Anybody here ever felt like giving up? Is there anybody here that ever felt like throwing in the towel? Especially with what we've gone through in the last couple of years. Seems like everything is pressing towards us to make us not be able to do what God has called us to do. And it seems like time to give up. But brothers and sisters, I tell you this morning, don't give up. You get tired, yes, but don't give up. You get burdened, yes, but don't give up. Your feelings get hurt, yes, but don't Give up. You know, Paul is writing this letter to Galatia. And if in your reading this week, I pray that you'll read the entire book of Galatians. And you'll see that Paul was a little bit upset. Paul was upset with the church in Galatia because of the things that were going on. What was happening was there was some Judaizers that came to the church in Galatia. Yes. All right. And what they were saying was, in order to be Christian, you first must be Jew. 
You have to do the Jewish customs in order to be Christian. And Paul told them, no, Jesus paid it. The blood of Jesus covers us. The law of Moses doesn't cover us anymore. The law of grace does. So you don't have to do the Jewish traditions and customs in order to be saved. But they were going against that. Paul was upset with the church in Galatia. And he writes this letter. By, by the fifth chapter of this Galatians, Paul starts to calm down a little bit. And he talks about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, and peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, all of those things that God ordains. The things that he wants us to live by, the things that he wants us to do. And then he gets to chapter 6. And around verse 7, he starts talking. And I believe that after he had calmed down a little bit, he got a little riled up again. Because in verse 7, he says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, don't fool yourself. Don't act crazy. Because God will not be made a fool of. Don't come in here trying to make up your own rules because God has already ordained it and whatever he said is what goes. Don't come in here trying to make a fool out of God. God will not be mocked. And brothers and sisters, that's a pertinent word for us yes, this sir. morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because there are a lot of churches all around this nation uh -huh. at this very hour yes. that's making a mockery uh -huh. out of God. Yes, Doing anything, yes, saying anything, yes, living any kind of way and expect God to bless them, that's not so. Be not deceived. God is not Mine. Because what you sow, you will reap. Huh? Don't be deceived. He sees you. Don't be deceived. He knows you. Don't be deceived. He didn't forget what he told you to do and how he told you to do it. God will not be mocked in what you suck. You will reap. So, so keep on, keep on. Do what you're doing. That's why so many ministers in high places that they put themselves and that others have put in those high places. That's why they come tumbling. That's why those ministries that seemed as though they were busting at the seams, that's why their churches are empty this morning. That's why the mighty fall. Because God will not be mine. Whatever you sow, you share. And that's a whole nother sermon. I didn't mean to go there. We're trying to get to where we're going. But I thought I had to tell you that. He said, you, 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 you sow in the flesh. And through the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. You sow in the spirit. And in the spirit, you shall receive life everlasting. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And if I get a chance to come back, we'll talk about that. Let's keep going. Verse 9. He, he kind of simmers down. He had thought about all that foolishness that them Judaizers had brought. And they got him riled up again, but he's gone back down. And he says, look, let us not be weary. 
in well do. For in due season ye shall reap if ye faint not. Now, now, the choice of words that Paul uses, he uses 19 words and he uses them very judiciously. He says, and let us not be weary. Now, Paul was an experienced writer. And if you read through the, the writings of Paul, you'll see that he had a command of, of what he was writing. He knew what he was talking about, and he used the words that he mean to use. And in this text, he uses the word us. Let us not be weary. In other words, he's calming himself down. Because, brothers and sisters, us's can make you crazy. <laughs> Am I right about it? Us's can make us crazy. Us's can get on. Let us, he includes everybody. Now, of course, he was talking to the church in Galatia. And he was saying, let us not be weary and well-doing. I know they're coming in and trying to tell you all kinds of things. But let us not be weary. Us together. Me, you, and them. Let us not be weary and well-doing. But he's also talking centuries later to us. Let us not be weary. Talking to the church. Everybody is not included in this us. Only the people that are doing what God has called them to do is included in this us. But even with that being said, the us that Paul is talking about is still people. And can I tell you a little bit about people? People will act a people on you. People are finite, fickle, foolish, hard to figure out. People will fail you. Even the people that are called to do what we're doing. Maybe I lost you. Let me tell you. Let me talk to you about it. You know those folk in here? Now, I'm not talking about Second Mountain. I'm talking about them other churches that I've been to. You, you, you know how, how, how some of them get upset when they in the choir and they don't get the solo, and they sit down and, and say, well, we'll see what they do without my voice. You know the ones, you know the ones that get upset in the business meeting when your idea is not picked? Or if your idea is picked and you're not placed ahead of it? I, I, I'm going to sit back and just see what they're going to do yeah, without me. Yeah. You know the people. Uh -huh. The people that are in here. Yeah. The buses that are in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still people. Yeah. And people will act a people on you. And, and can I stick this in as a side note? Can I tell you what happens when you act like that? When you sit down and say that I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. When you decide not to come back to the church because I want to see what they're going to do without me. Well, if you really want to see what will happen without you, die. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We're going to be sad. We're going to cry. We're going to come in here on Saturday and we're going to stretch 
Pepsi out across here. We gonna cry, we gonna sing, we gonna preach, we may even shout. We gonna roll you out. We gonna go down to Paradise North or we gonna go to Houston Memorial Garden. We gonna put you down. We gonna come back here, we gonna eat some fried chicken, some potato salad, some green beans, maybe some Kool-Aid. We gonna go home and Sunday morning we'll be right back up in here doing the same thing we were doing when you were here. In other words, God doesn't need He doesn't do what he do because of us. He does what he does in spite of us. It's a privilege for God to use you. It's a privilege for you to do something in God's program. It's a privilege to do well. Paul said, let us not be weary. 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 I don't do this very often. I don't use Greek words because I believe it's a distraction sometimes. But this one, this one really got me. And it really helps explain what Paul meant by weary. And it's epikale. And it simply means, in the Greek, it simply means that your insides are fed because of outside pressure. Your insides are fed because of outside pressure. In other words, the things that's happening on the outside is causing the inside to fail. That's what being weary is. It's not being weary and being tired are two different things. Can I explain it to you? And I promise you, I'm almost through. We almost through this verse. Now, I recently went back to the gym. I had been out for about a year and I, I was trying to take it slow and get back in the groove. But sometimes I do a little more than what I'm supposed to. So, so one morning, I, I usually go about four o'clock after my three o'clock in the morning prayer. I go to the gym by four o'clock in the morning. Because most of the time there's nobody there. But this day, there's a couple of folk in there. And you know how they try to show out in the gym. <laughs> so I'd been in there, I'd been doing my thing, and then here comes a brother by me. I got 15, I'm trying to curl because I was doing drop sets. So my last set would be my smallest weight. So I'm, I'm lifting the 15. And he walks by me and goes, Now you y'all looking at me crazy, but y'all know what that means. And back in the day, he would have got one of these for that. But God has been working on me. But he walked by me and as though that ain't, that, that ain't nothing. What he didn't know was all the work that I had put in before. And I had gotten tired, but I kept on going. Now, I was tired, I was fatigued, but he almost made me weary because of what he was, because of his reaction to what I was doing. If that was the best I could do, that was the best I could do. But his reaction almost caused me to be weary. Because of what he did, almost caused me to quit. Not because I was tired, but because I was weary. So what are you saying? Well, when you're doing good, and you're trying to help folks, and the folks that you're trying to help turn around and do you some kind of way, that's when you tend to get When you're doing your best to help somebody and they turn around and stab you in the back, that can make you weak. The external pressure cause your intern, internal to fail. 
you know, they, they, the, the ones you help start talking about you. The, 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 the ones you take the time with. When they get to where they're going, they forget all about you. You know that college student that y'all poured into? And once they graduated from college, they decided they was a little bit too sedated to be at Second Mount Island. It can make you. You know that brother and sister that you help get on their feet and they got a job now and they got a, got, got, got a house now and they got a car now and now they can't make their way to church or they can't even acknowledge that God did it for them. It can make you. But Paul said, let us not be weary. But here we go. Let us not be weary in well-doing. In doing what God has called you to do. That's what he means in well-doing. You know, all of the fruit of the Spirit, all of those things. Let us not get weary in doing what God has called us to do. But brothers and sisters, the problem is a lot of us are making ourselves weary doing other stuff. Notice Paul says, don't be weary in well-doing. But a lot of us are making ourselves weary doing stuff that's other than well. Worried about what's going on on social media. Social media is making you I'm all for Black Lives Matter because they do. But can I put an addendum on that? The way you live your Black Lives Matter. Because the way you live your Black life will determine how much it matters to you. And if your life matters not to you, how do you expect it to matter to somebody else? A lot of us are weary but we're not weary in we are doing, we're weary in foolishness. Doing anything we want to do, living any kind of way and expecting God to bless us, it don't happen that way. We try to use church as a spiritual car wash. We do whatever we want to do Monday through Saturday, then we come in here on Sunday and expect to get power washed. And everything is all right. But it's making you. You got it? All right. But Paul says, let us not be weary in well doing. A lot of us walk around, we don't help nobody. We don't prophesy or we don't testify to anybody. We don't share God with nobody. We don't share Christ with anyone. Brothers and sisters, that will make you weary. And that's not being weary and well-doing. That's being weary and doing nothing. Let us not be weary. I know I'm losing you, but we're going to get there. We're going to get where you want to get them there. Let us not be weary. In well doing, for in due season you shall reap. Now, this due season stuff. What are you talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked. Due season. I, I promise you, I don't do this this much, but I have to do it today. The Greek word that's used for do is idios, and it means my own. Idios, it means my own. So Paul is saying, be not weary in well-doing, for in your own season ye shall reap. In other words, my season is not your season. 
your season is not my season. We can't be jealous looking around and seeing people reach their season because we can rest assured that our season is coming. If we're doing what God has called us to do, if we're living the way that God wants us to live, our season is coming. Your season, yours, yours, nobody else's, your season is coming. Season. Cowards. As opposed to chronos. Chronos is chronological order. Chronos is when the sun goes down, the moon goes up, moon goes down, sun goes up. That's a day. Seasons change chronologically. But this season is called Kairos. That means it comes when it comes. It's coming when it comes. There's no set time. You can't just sit and wait for it to come. All you can do is work until it gets here. So, let's see what Paul is saying. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in your own season, in your own time, you shall reap. And that's good. But there's a caveat there. Because there is a two-letter word that has great weight. <laughs> Whenever you see him, you better pay attention to what comes out. That's how being you feel. When you see if, pay attention to what comes next. Because Paul says, be not weary in well doing, for in due season, your own season, you shall reap if. That means you have to do something. I believe the last time I was here, I told you when Jesus did miracles, he required those to do something and then he would do what they couldn't do. So, brothers and sisters, while we're waiting on our miracle, while we're waiting on our season, we have to do what we can do. And all that he requires us to do is don't give up. It gets rough, it gets tough, the hills get hard to climb, the roads get rough, it rains on us, it snows on us, it blizzards on us, COVID-19 comes, people leave us, but we can't give up. All we have to do is do what God requires us to do, and don't give up. And our season, your season, will come. Brothers and sisters, I don't know when your season will get here. But all I can tell you this morning is don't get weary. Don't get weary. Keep doing well. And don't give up. And I wonder why I can say that. Now, I could, I could say that because of what Paul said, but, but that's not enough for me. You know, I, I, I love Paul. He's my favorite writer in the Bible. But that's not it for me. Because it's easy for you to tell me what to do than to show me what to do. The reason I can hold on and the reason that you should hold on and not give up is because Paul didn't give up. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was bitten by poisonous snakes. Paul was thrown in jail. But Paul didn't give up. Paul was stoned, beaten, and left for dead. But Paul didn't give up. So I can take his words and live by what he said. Because of what he's shown me. 
He's shown me that if you do what God tells you to do, and you don't give up, your season will come. But that's still not enough for me. The reason I know that if you hold on, the reason I know that if you don't give up, the reason I know if you don't get weary in a way I'll do it, that you will reap and your season will come. The reason I know this is because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, they woke my Savior up Calvary's rugged heel. They beat him and they spit him. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. They nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And I found Calvary, he died, didn't he die? He died till the sun refused to shine. Oh, he died till the Roman soldier cried out, Surely this man's the son of God. But he didn't give up. He stayed on the cross. He had power enough to come down. But he looked over 2,000 years later and saw you and me and decided to give up his life. And he died out on Calvary. He died, but he didn't stay dead. Because early, 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 resurrection Sunday morning, God rose him from the dead. His season was here.
go to church. Is that one? Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank all y'all for showing us so much love 
and uh, support on yesterday. And Mr. Uh, Wade just preached the sermon about you'll reap if you faint not. In due season, my mom got her due season. My mom, she didn't give up. She stayed in, she didn't throw in the towel. And, and she didn't throw in the towel. And in due season, my mom got to go to heaven. So, and if you have a mom, it's kind of hard because next week would be her, would have been her 80th birthday. And today is Mother's Day. But we know our mom is in a better place. We knew our mom knew God, and that's the most important thing. That's always taught us that people always ask, well, how did they die? Say, don't worry about how they died. You better worry about who they died in. My mom died in the Lord. So again, we thank y'all. Uh, thank you for your cards, your monetary gifts, your love. I mean, y'all showed out on yesterday. People couldn't even come in the church because they already had took the tapes down there. The church was full. Chairs were out. And people had to sit outside in their cars. So we thank God for uh, all of you. We love you, second my life. Sister Young, Mill. Uh, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Patrick for playing on yesterday, and all y'all, Stephanie, everybody, I can't, everybody that came on yesterday. I know y'all love my mom, and my mom loves second mom, and we really, truly, truly, truly thank you, God. I just want to say something to Pastor Wade. He don't know, the second mom out of the Chew Street. That was Pastor Favor's sermon, I don't like, I'm assuming. Because he used to always, that's what caught me. When he throwed out that line, he kept throwing it out, don't get weary and well doing. And I used to didn't understand that, but I understand it today. But when he was first throwing it out, and he kept saying, I'm like, well, that's that's it. That's always picked it at the end of the church, you know, when he called it in. And he kept throwing it out, and he finally hooked me with it. And that's what hooked me, don't get weary and well doing. You'll be I kept on coming, I kept on coming, and I'm still here today. And I thank God for that. I thank you for the words, sir. Good morning, church. I'm just coming here for prayers. I've been down with my eyes. Almost a year and a half now. And uh, I don't know what's going to become of it because I'm going to have surgery next month on June the 1st. So it is to help my eyesight. I don't know if I'll be able to see again or not. So, church, please pray for me because it's the hell that I'm going through. Can we do that? Yes. Surgery is serious. So let's pray for Sister, Sister Sue and Brother Sue. As they go through what they're going through. Deacon Mitchell has some prayer. Let's pray for the whole church, y'all. We want to know. We need each other.
remarks. Man, God bless you. Thank you for indulging me this morning. Once again, happy Mother's Day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope I didn't hold you too long. Amen. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for your hospitality. And I thank you for the way that you handled everything that you did. God will be pleased. God is pleased. Amen. I applaud you for the way that you gone about the business of the church. Amen. And honoring the life, the legacy, the love, and the labor of Pastor Arthur Ray Young. I know he's smiling now on this day. Amen. As you continue to honor him, Get to honor Sister Young as well. Amen. It's not easy being a first lady. Amen. I know I've seen my mama. I love my mama. But I've seen all the stuff that she has to go through. And I'm glad she's as strong as she is. Amen. Thank my wife, Melody, and my Daughter Harmony, my strongest support. Amen. 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 I love you guys. And I can't wait to see you again. Amen. Amen. There's nothing else let us stand. Gracious God, our Father, we come now, first of all, telling you thank you. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place on this morning. We thank you for sending your spirit. We thank you for your word through song, and we thank you for your preached word. We thank you for preaching in this place, because we know that all preaching is done by you. We thank you, God, for allowing us to gather here. We thank you for all these mothers that are here. We ask that you would bless them, help them enjoy the rest of their day. God, we ask that you would Continue to bless us as we leave from this place. God, dismiss us from this place, but never ever from your presence. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and present us faultless before his throne of grace with exceeding joy. He is our redeemer now, henceforth, and even forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you. See you next time. <laughs>